We begin tonight on the edge with breaking news from Detroit's east side. That's where police are investigating an armed robbery that has led to a shooting. A crime scene tape surrounding the area of Seven Mile and Conant. We're told a 22 year old is in critical condition after getting shot in the chest. He's currently undergoing surgery. The shooters ended up getting away. Also on the edge tonight, a double shooting in southwest Detroit, leaving an innocent man in critical condition and a popular high school athlete dead. Today, Ecorse High School ended the school day early so students could mourn the loss of Darnell Kemp. Fox News' Jessica Dukanak joining us live with more on gun violence, taking Jessica yet another life. Yeah, absolutely. I was just uh, texting with one of Darnell's coaches. He's been coaching him for the last, you know, nine years or so. He said this whole thing is absolutely surreal. He called Darnell a legend in the making in the sports world. And on top of it all, he was humble. And he was like that bright spot that you knew was going to do something great and take e-course with them. When your superintendent knows you and knows you well, you've clearly made an impression. And that's exactly what we're told about Darnell Nellie Kemp. I consider all the students in the district my children. So I feel like one of my chip, my personal children has been taken away um, for something senseless. 18 year old Darnell shot at a stoplight Monday night at Outer Drive and Fort in Southwest Detroit. The next day, Tuesday, we watched as Detroit police comb for evidence. Investigators say a car pulled up, firing into the car Darnell was in, hitting him multiple times. He later died at the hospital. In that spray of gunfire, a 43 year old man at this gas station, described as an innocent bystander, was shot too. At last check, Tuesday, he was in critical condition and the shooter is still out there. He wasn't a kid that was in the streets uh, because he played so many sports. He was always traveling or doing something something positive. So Ecorse police say this shooting could be related to one in their city off 12th Street reported just minutes before the one that took Darnell. Neighbors out there tell us off camera they heard a volley of gunfire around 1130. What's the vibe? What's going through your mind when you unstoppable like that? Step up. Yeah. He was an all-state athlete in baseball, football, and basketball. He actually has, I think, up to 15 Division I scholarships for baseball. Students dismissed early from class Tuesday at Ecorse High School, and Wednesday, classes canceled. Mental health professionals will be there all week. For not only the students, but the staff. The staff is taking this very hard, and as a student has been in the district since he's in kindergarten, we have to provide services for um, all of the staff. Superintendent Dr. Joshua Tallison says he'll be remembered not only for what he did out here, but what he did off the court and field too. You know, even this summer, he did a volunteer baseball camp for kids in the community, like from five to 12 to teach them baseball. Just out, that's out of sheer love of giving back. A community in mourning. Now, Darnell will also be honored at Friday's football game with a balloon release and vigil. Now, Ecorse Police putting out a pretty stern warning on the city's Facebook page as they try to potentially connect the dots between the shooting in their city and the one not too far where Darnell uh, was shot in southwest Detroit. They're saying enough with the rumors, no more rumors on social media. If you have credible, tangible tips, they will absolutely take them. Reporting live. Jessica Dupnak on the edge. Well, Jessica, at this point, do police even know what the possible motive may be, meaning is this a targeted shooting or was it random or do they even know what they're dealing with? It's unclear when we were out in the neighborhood in Ecorse and folks talked to us off camera. They said that there was a lot of gunfire uh, on 12th Street right around 1130. And then a couple minutes later, that's where Darnell was found shot in southwest Detroit. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say at this point. They're really working to connect the dots sure. and they're trying to sift through all the rumors. That's why they're asking folks only credible tips. Well, oh, in the meantime, what a terrible loss. And hopefully someone will come forward with that credible tip, as you said. Jessica, thank you. They just arrested four people for the shooting, four teenagers who go to Warren Woods. You've got to be kidding. 
Violence involving high school students is also shocking a community in Warren. Four students at Warren Woods Tower High School facing charges for shooting a 26 year old man near the school campus, paralyzing him. The school was put on lockdown last Thursday, as well as the nearby Macomb Community College South Campus as police search for the suspects. Two 14 year olds and two 15 year olds are now facing charges in what police are calling a planned robbery on a marijuana drug dealer. We're told there could be others charged in connection to that shooting. About 2.33 o'clock, kids get to shooting at each other, you know, on a Tuesday. I'm out here cooking for the community, and this is what happens. On Detroit's east side, another instance of kids putting themselves in dangerous situations. Tonight, another young person is recovering from a gunshot wound. Police tell us that victim was actually spotted pointing a gun at another person on Peyton Street this afternoon and was later shot a few blocks away on Meringue. He will likely be placed under arrest once he is released from the hospital. Hey, he was getting his own car. Let him go. We had plenty of witnesses out here, which was all family, telling them that she was the owner of this house and that that was his car. The Detroit Police Department will be taking a closer look at this confrontation that has now gone viral. Yesterday, officers witnessed 34 year old Larry Morrison trying to break into a car. Family members say it was his vehicle and his keys were locked inside. Police telling us Morrison wouldn't cooperate and wrestled with those officers during the arrest. Others jumped in and even jumped on top of officers. Morrison has been released with no pending charges. Two officers have been put on administrative duty as the department looks into their use of force. A shocking new development to a recent crash that critically injured an off-duty Livonia police officer while he was riding his motorcycle. Fox 2 has learned the other driver involved in the accident was a Livonia City Councilman. Rob Donovic was traveling in his pickup truck earlier this month when he crashed into the biker at Middle Belt and Six Mile. At last check, that off-duty officer was still listed in a critical condition. In a statement, Donovic told Fox 2 he's asking for prayers for the officer and his family and called it every driver's worst nightmare being involved in an accident. Right now, police are not commenting on the investigation. Embattled Michigan State football coach Mel Tucker goes on the offensive as he fights claims of sexual harassment. He's citing wrongdoing on the part of MSU and in a statement, Tucker says, quote, I don't believe MSU actually plans to fire me because I admitted to an entirely consensual private relationship with another adult who gave one presentation at MSU at my behest over two years ago. A cursory reading of the facts and timeline should cause any fair minded person to conclude that other motives are at play. Tucker also claims MSU has known the basic facts of the case since last March, but only moved to fire him after the story went public last week. He also says he asked to go on medical leave for a serious health issue a few days before learning he would be fired. Tucker is accused of harassing a sexual assault survivor and activist who he asked to speak to the team. Day five of the UAW strike ending with good news for our Canadian counterparts. Canadian Auto Union Unifor reaching a tentative agreement with Ford averting a strike. And the union represents more than 5,000 Ford workers. The agreement coming minutes before last night's strike deadline, prompting a 24-hour extension. Here at home, the clock is ticking for the UAW and the Big Three to make substantial progress by noon Friday. Otherwise, more plants could be walking off the job, which could include the Ford trucking plant in Dearborn. We will be ready at a moment's notice. That's the largest assembly plant uh, in the state of Michigan and the most profitable plant in North America. The big three have made a number of proposals to the UAW all of which have been turned down. And of course, this UAW strike has a huge fallout, especially for the auto suppliers. Fox News' Dave Kinchin gives us a look at the impact on those businesses. We're fighting, we're holding the line. Arnisha Daniel is one of the many auto workers at Ford Michigan Assembly in Wayne, pushing through day five of the UAW's strike against the big three, with even more questions about the immediate future. And major changes are already happening in the industry. We just want to stick together. We want to see things just move at a, a better and a progressive way for everybody. Meanwhile, things are up in the air for the suppliers that provide the many small plastic and metal parts that go into American-made cars, particularly the small 
smaller companies who might lay off workers in a major ripple effect. This is troubling indeed because of the speed. That's the reaction from automotive analyst Jan Griffiths to mid-Michigan supplier CIE Nucor. It just announced plans to lay off nearly 300 workers due to the strike. Jan spent 35 years running global purchasing and supply chain operations in the auto business. First of all, CIE is being smart by putting that notice out there now to notify their workforce and others that there's a layoff coming. And when you're in a situation like this as a tier two supplier, you have to conserve cash. You've got cash coming in for a few more weeks from the products you've already made. But then if you're not producing right now, because of the strike, then there's no cash coming. She says many other small suppliers will follow suit with layoffs if a deal is not reached between the UAW and Detroit automakers soon. They're fragile right now because they've just recovered from COVID, barely, the chip crisis. They've had to deal with wage increases, transportation increases, utility increases, raw material increases, the cost of money. They're having to manage all of this. And now you have a strike that puts a dead stop on their incoming cash. And that's a problem. Meantime, workers here at the Wayne facility for Ford and all across the industry right now, they're going to watch to see what the UAW says as of Friday noon. That's the deadline they set for either significant progress to be made between the union and the big three as far as talks, or UAW President Sean Fain says more target strike locations will be announced. And he'll make that announcement on Facebook, and we will keep you updated. Reporting in Wayne, Dave Kinchin on the edge. Thanks, Dave. Well, pit bulls will soon be banned from Gross Point Shores. The ordinance approved at tonight's city council meeting after some fierce debate. I don't think it's a pit bull problem. It's a ferocious dog problem. Pit bulls are very aggressive dogs. They need expert training, and most residents don't know how to handle a dog of that nature. I support the ban on pit bulls in Gross Point Shores. The ordinance stems from a violent attack back in June. More than 300 people signed pen to paper opposing such a ban, with some calling the breed ban discrimination. City Council voting 4-3 to three passing the ordinance. It will not impact those who already own a pit bull. All right, let's talk about our weather. Cooler start to the week, but you know what? It's been warming up, the sun's out, and uh, hopefully it'll continue. A little bit of this, a little bit of that when it comes to the temperatures, yeah. but not with the rain, which has been nice to uh, have some dry weather, Rich. We uh, needed that. A long stretch of dry weather. Now, we could see a couple sprinkles late tonight or tomorrow morning with our weak system out over the Lake Michigan right now, but again, it just sprinkles nothing more than that. I know a lot of you were thinking football already for the upcoming weekend. How about Rutgers at Michigan at the noon kickoff? Maryland up in East Lansing, 330. It's going to be nice with numbers in the 70s. Right now, it's cool up in Cadillac, 58 degrees there. Those are live pictures. Not much going on in Cadillac, Michigan tonight. Take a look at what uh, we have happening down in our part of the state. Now, all of a sudden, I got a computer freeze. Z, if you would, please. Is it? Oh, wait, I'm pressing the button here, and it's not happening. We're stuck on Cadillac. Well, let's do this. Well, let me try this. Wait a minute. Oh, we're stuck on Cadillac. Let's do this. Let me, uh, let me throw back to Roop, and then I'll get my computer. Oh, there it is. Now it's working. OK, OK. 72 and 49, you're high and low for today. It's all quiet right now. Numbers for a lot of us in the middle 50s. No wind out there, that's for sure. Look at the cool spots. North Bay, 43 degrees, 66 to our west in Chicago. High pressure keeps us dry with the exception of a few sprinkles tomorrow morning. It gets even warmer for Thursday and Friday. You'll see that in the seven day. 57 tonight, back up to 75 tomorrow. And then right there is that full seven day near 80 degrees for Thursday and Friday. Looking good for our first day of fall that Saturday. Lions home on Sunday. Remember, always get the latest forecast. Check it out. The Fox 2 weather app you can download it for free anytime in the App Store or in Google Play.